In our last episode, we discovered that Blackbird, the only survivor of the Augusta Safehouse Massacre, was dead. The Institute keeps thumping us over and over again. But all this time, we've been inside the Institute, infiltrating it, pretending to work for the Institute in the Commonwealth. And yet there have been times where we've had to make choices the Institute didn't like. At Libertalia, for example, we killed Gabriel, the rogue synth, rather than let the Institute get their hands on him. First mistake, last mistake. You gotta be joking. What are you doing? You're supposed to bring him back alive. That synth was a valuable piece of technology. You're going to have to explain this to Father. And in my video on Libertalia, we explored what Father's reactions would be if we failed. After Libertalia, we get our player home at the Institute, and a while later, Father sends us to Bunker Hill to rescue the stolen synths. And now that we are working with the railroad, we understand that bit of the story better now. Of course there were synths at Bunker Hill. Old Man Stockton is working out of Bunker Hill. When we sided with the Institute, we successfully retrieved the synths from the basement at Bunker Hill. But this time, we need to free them. And Father isn't going to like that. As soon as we get the quest, The Battle for Bunker Hill, instead of going to Bunker Hill to meet the Courser, we can head straight for the railroad. This is something Desdemona needs to know about. Can I talk to you? Something on your mind? Any news on your side? Things we've set in motion continue to move. There are complications, always are, but nothing worth bringing to your attention. How about you? Any news? Nothing springs to mind. If you need help with your infiltration, let me or Tinker Tom know. Maybe later we can talk about it. If you need me for anything, just let me know. The Institute knows about Bunker Hill. They're planning to recapture the synths there. The timing couldn't be worse. The old man's been sitting on those four synths. There's nowhere else that's safe we could put them. Maintaining your cover is vital. But this, the sacrifice is just too great. How much damage would it cause if we let them hit us? We're running out of places to hide our synths. That's why we put so many eggs in one crowded basket to begin with. So what would we lose? Four synths, Stockton, some of our best agents, and the inevitable civilian casualties? No, not this time. I'm not sure it's worth it. Besides Stockton, we have a lot of other good men there. Plus the inevitable civilian casualties. It's just too much. We'll lose a lot more than four cents if the Institute kicks me out. Then we need to make sure you stay in their good graces. Stockton and the Synths are depending on us. We can't let them down. Well said. We've never known when and where the Institute would strike us next. But now we have a chance to turn the tables. We wait until the enemy is in position, then we hit them. Hard. No one they send out comes back alive except you. Understand? Oh, is that all? Need anything else while I'm at it? No. Just keep defying the odds. Won't the Institute be suspicious if I'm the only one left? You're a lot tougher than anyone else in their outfit. If only one person could survive, it would be you. And any story you come up with won't be contradicted. So much could go wrong. It's too risky. With glory, you, and additional reinforcements, I believe we have a fighting chance. With me working the inside angle, this is doable. We can't attack too early. We need to draw them into the kill zone, and then spring the trap. You'll know when. You'll probably have a coarser escort. You'll have to take him down. You've done it before, but it'll still be dangerous. Is all this really worth it? We can't afford to sacrifice Stockton and the synths. There's just too few of us left. And we can't relocate them without compromising your cover. Well, this'll be an interesting challenge. Taking down a courser on top of everything else. It's too much. Like you said, I've done it before. It's a risk, but it's one we have to take. So get it done. Well, we warned her. And now she's made our job impossible. She wants us to rescue the synths and kill all the Institute that arrive. No survivors, no blown cover. Thankfully, at least for this mission, it sounds like she's going to send some railroad reinforcements. But on top of it, we're going to have to kill the courser we're supposed to meet up with. We find X418 in the same alleyway where we found him when we did this with the Institute. And we have the same conversation. Though Deacon has a few fun quips during this conversation. This mission's gonna be a lot of fun, Corsair buddy. Here are the recall codes. Follow me. 
As soon as the conversation ends, the assault begins. And of course, the Brotherhood arrives too. Just like when we did this with the Institute, even if we don't warn the Railroad and we don't warn the Brotherhood, both factions arrive at Bunker Hill. As we approach the town, we see Railroad agents come out of the woodwork and attack. Thankfully, they recognize us and they leave us alone. With the agents distracting the Brotherhood and the Institute, we can make a beeline for the utility basement. And the fight plays out as we expect in the utility basement. Letting the agents fight off the Institute and the Brotherhood, we can make our way to the back of this basement, where we find that Stockton has hidden the synths in a back room. Annoyingly, our Courser Escort X418 joins us here. And as we explored in our last video on the topic, we can tell the synths here that they're free to go. I've been looking for you. No, no, I, I, I've got money. It's yours if you let me go. You're safe, okay? I'm gonna let you go. Oh God, thank you. But if we do, X418 turns hostile and we have to put him down. After killing the courser, we now have to mop up any remaining Institute or Brotherhood in this bunker. And remember, this is a great opportunity to walk away with a railroad armored coat. There's likely to be a few dead railroad agents lying around, so we should loot them now before we leave. I've found, though, that after freeing the synths, the railroad tends to finish off anyone left behind. Confusingly, even at this point, we still see a quest marker hovering over the heads of each synth, saying that we still need to deal with them. However, continuing to talk with them, they just thank us for freeing them. You've given us another chance at life. We won't forget it. I can't believe you'd do that for us. Thank you. We'll get somewhere safe as soon as you're gone. Thank you for sparing us. And so the only thing left for us to do is leave the bunker. The battle still rages topside. We could stick around and assist the railroad in finishing off everyone here, but it's not necessary to continue the quest. We next head to the CIT ruins. We now have to have a pretty awkward conversation with Father. The conversation begins in the same way it does when I explored his dialogue options back when we completed this quest for the Institute. However, if we save the synths on behalf of the railroad, Father expresses his displeasure. Everything I've done has been for the future. A future which I hope is not in jeopardy after recent events. Bunker Hill did not go well for us. Would you care to explain what happened? There is only one way we can mess up this conversation, and that's if we say... <sighs> I made a choice. I let the synths go free. Why? Why would you do something so... so stupid? So a few synths go missing. It's not the end of the world. Why is this so important? By allowing this to happen, the Institute appears weak. This is an unacceptable outcome. It was the right thing to do, Sean. There's no moral choice to be made here. I made the call. I don't have to explain myself to you. No, no you do. You at least owe me an explanation. They were afraid. They didn't want to come back here. Afraid? They're machines, artificial. They're incapable of being afraid. This was such a simple task. I just don't understand. I know you're capable of handling yourself. How can I expect you to represent the Institute if this sort of thing continues? At this point, we have one option that we can choose to salvage the conversation. And that's if we say, Sean, I'm sorry. It won't happen again. I appreciate that. But this makes things difficult. He then goes on with the conversation as if we didn't own up to what we did a moment ago. However, if we choose any of the other options... What if I don't want to represent the Institute? Have you thought about that? To be quite honest, no, I hadn't considered that. It would be such a poor decision on your part. I had not given it much thought. <laughs> Let's not forget our roles here, son. At the end of the day, I am still your father. I am acutely aware of our positions. I am also not a child. And I have a tremendous amount of responsibility for the Institute. I don't want to be involved in this, Sean. 
I want out. After all this, after everything you've seen, all that you've learned, you're just going to walk away. We again find ourselves in a dialogue tree where we have only one opportunity to salvage this conversation. Remember, we're supposed to be maintaining our cover. If we say, I'm sorry, Sean. You're right. Let's just forget this ever happened. It's not quite that simple. Then he covers for us, and we again move towards the dialogue we would have gotten had we not owned up to what we did. However, if we choose any of the other options... So where does this leave us? I need to be sure I can count on you going forward. I can't do it, Sean. I can't be a part of this anymore. Ah, uh, I am very sorry to hear that. You may actually be completely crazy. Well, I suppose that makes your position quite clear, doesn't it? I had hoped we could be something like a family again. I hoped you shared our vision for the future. I'm afraid there's no room for sentimentality, Father. If you are not with us, then you are against us. Whatever you do going forward, do not interfere with the Institute's plans. I hope... I hope you can find some amount of peace. Me too, Sean. So that's it. We're done then. Fine. If that's the way it has to be. <laughs> I dreamed of you as an adult for so long. Here you are. And I'm so disappointed. Goodbye, Father. With that, we fail the Battle of Bunker Hill. We start and complete Banished from the Institute. This removes our ability to relay into the Institute. We can't go back. We start Burning Cover, our final railroad quest, and we begin Form Ranks. We now have to work with the Minutemen if we want to save the synths, because by blowing our cover, we fail the quest Underground Undercover. If we return to the railroad, we have to tell Desdemona that we blew our cover. Bad news. They kicked me out of the Institute. I can't get back in. Oh, God damn it. And we learn that we can no longer complete the game on the behalf of the railroad because we've blown our cover. We can no longer save all of the synths there. And we explore these dialogue options at the beginning of the railroad series. Of course, there's another way to resolve this. We could kill Sean. In which case we again blow our cover, but we still have the opportunity to relay into the Institute. And after killing Sean, if we do... You killed him! How could you do that? He was your son! You... you better run, because if we find you, we're gonna kill you! You hear me? You're dead! The Institute relays us out to safety, but then removes our ability to relay in again. However, in order to maintain our cover, we need to choose any of the other options beside the one where we admit to what we've done. So instead of telling Father that we let the synths go, we could say, We were totally ambushed. They were waiting for us. You can imagine that I find that very hard to believe, given that all the intelligence leading up to this indicated we'd taken them by surprise. We got our asses kicked. Does it matter how? The chances of failing this mission were so astronomically low that yes, it does matter. It's my fault. I wasn't able to complete the mission. I gave you this opportunity to prove yourself particularly to prove to the Directorate that you deserve a place here. That will now be significantly harder. There will be accusations that you deliberately sabotaged the mission. Bunker Hill was to cement your place as a valuable asset to the Institute. It will now only raise suspicions. And to see the Brotherhood of Steel involved in this? They had no way of knowing what was going on. I will refrain from sharing the outcome with the Directorate for the moment. Things are already in motion that this would only derail. Speaking of which, 
It's time for you to become more involved in the future of the Institute. I'd like you to join me inside. The Directorate is meeting, and you should be there. I'll be waiting. I've seen enough. It's time to go back in. And Father decides to cover for us. We're able to maintain our cover. From here, the Institute quests continue as normal. But of course, Father raises a good point. How did the Brotherhood learn about this? We didn't go and tip them off like we did the railroad. I get the impression that the battle for Bunker Hill was originally designed to only have the various factions show up to the battle for Bunker Hill based on our choices. And yet, no matter which choices I've made so far, all three factions, the Institute, the Railroad, and the Brotherhood, show up for the fight. Well, we disappointed Father, but we still managed to maintain our cover. We'll head to the Institute and keep pretending to work with them, all the while keeping the Railroad appraised of our actions. We'll pick up with the story right here where I leave off in my next episode. I publish new videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I have a plushie available for pre-order. That's right, it's my very first plushie, and I've got limited inventory. When it sells out, it's gone, so pre-order yours today. My plushies will be shipping at the beginning of Q2 2024, so snag one now if you don't want to miss out. Also, I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in another way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members get little badges that appear next to their names in the comment sections of my videos, and they get access to ox emojis that they can use in my video comments and in the live chats of my live streams. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with the next episode in the full story of The Railroad. Our need for raw power increases. Many compromises and sacrifices have been made over the years to allow progress to continue. In this world, I'm sure a compromise is necessary. Quite right. For far too long, we phase three is simply... Uh -huh. It will ensure, not just... Mm -hmm. Sounds like an important step. <laughs> That's... Sure. The reactor is close to ready, and to how you will help. Uh, sir. Yes, Dr. Ayo. Previously, while I'm not overly fond... Y yes but... This is not a matter for... Uh -huh. Now, there is one more... Sir. I don't know that... Dr. Holdren, as I'm sure several... I'm sorry, this is uh -huh. our best... Mm -hmm. I'm